Hello and welcome to everyone tuning in today. My name is Billy Mitchell. I'm Editor-in-Chief of FedScoop and I'm joined today by Bill Burnham, the U.S. Public Sector CTO for Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Bill, thanks so much for joining us. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. I appreciate you having me today. Absolutely. I'm excited to talk to you in conjunction with HPE's Public Sector Summit 2021. A lot of big trends talked about at that summit. Um, one of them is digital transformation. That's exactly where I would like to start our conversation today. Um, and, and, you know, asking how has the federal government made progress in recent months and years on its goals for digital transformation? That's a great, that's a great comment. And, you know, coming out of Prior to this two years I've been here with Hewlett Packard Enterprise, I did do about 30 in the federal government. Uh, so I come with a different perspective than a lot of private sector folks, because I lived through a lot of the digital transformation guidance. And what I will tell you is, you know, when we first started transforming with the cloud native construct back in 2011, it was, uh, uh, we, we weren't as clear on what we wanted to do. And the guidance was pretty much just move. Uh, uh, the belief being that if, the sooner we got into someone else's infrastructure, the better. And so I was, I was part of that movement of forklifting virtual machines from on-premises into someone else's infrastructure and then realized that that wasn't really what the rest of the private sector was doing when we talked about modernizing and going into a digital transformation. So what I will tell you is the guidance that came out of June of 2019, uh, starting in October 2018, with their, they moved from a cloud first to a cloud smart policy, and then June of 2019, uh, uh, the, the Fed CIO at the time, Suzette Kent, put out policy guidance, which is spot on and, and lines up with what the private sector is doing. Namely, focus on your applications, focus on adopting a cloud native style of computing. You know, cloud isn't a, a place to go. It's a it's a style of computing. And I think since that guidance has come out across the board, we have seen the federal government, the Department of Defense, uh, start appreciating more the importance of their applications, uh, modernizing their applications as a step one, and, and understanding their data and where their data is. You know, what we see in the private sector uh, day in and day out is, is it's about your data, understanding your data, what, what your data is, is it cleanly tagged, can it be trusted? And then it's about your applications and are you able to spawn your workloads where the data is, as opposed to moving the data to uh, your your workloads. And I think what you've seen recently in the last year and a half to two years out of the federal government is aligning policy with that construct. Uh, and that's given a lot of freedom of maneuver to the to the federal agencies and the, and the Department of Defense. They're no longer required to close their data centers, so to speak. They're no longer required to move off premise. The policy even says, hey, run inside your government-owned data center, but rationalize your applications and modernize your applications. So I think that's been a critical shift in the last two years that has allowed the government to accelerate its modernization efforts. That's great. Bill, one of the other big themes we're, we're hearing at the summit is sort of the push to the edge and more agencies working at the edge and performing their missions at the edge. Yeah. Um, and, and so I'd be interested to hear how agencies with those missions at the edge been able to leverage uh, the research and development out of the private sector and emerging technologies like 5G and artificial intelligence. So what we've seen, and I, again, 30 years or so in the in the federal DOD space, largely the edge and the rugged edge environment has been the domain of the Department of Defense, quite frankly. Uh, there just hasn't been a lot of activity in the private sector space that required you to run compute in a dusty, dirty, high, you know, hot environment. Uh, while the rest of our techn technology and technical fields have been kind of overwhelmed by the R&D investments of the private sector, the rugged edge hadn't been until recently, I'll be honest with you. I've done some, some speaking on Capitol Hill, and, and the message now is because of the impact of what we'll call the, you know, the Internet of Things, especially industrial Internet of Things, IIoT, uh, what we've seen in private sector companies trying to make decisions very quickly, the first mover in the private sector is the one that makes the money. They wanna make decisions as soon as the data is generated, which means where the data is generated without having to move all that data in. There has been a huge investment in the private sector. And so when I was last on Capitol Hill, the message is, hey, the, the, the rugged edge is now a commercial domain. Uh, what's happening is, you know, our telco customers, our oil and gas customers, even our big box store customers are investing extraordinarily heavily in creating compute capabilities that mirror data center capability, but they're demanding that we create it in a way that it allows it to operate in 55 Celsius, as an example. We have a, we have a, a very capable server that 
largely the telco community paid for to enable 5G. Uh, uh, but that R&D investment created a box that, that, that is unmatched and never could be matched by investment from the government. So now you see the government adopting that technology. And frankly, it's pennies on the dollar because the, the NRE, the non-recurring engineering has been paid for. And, and we're making thousands of them. And so the price point compared to what we used to build ourselves with kind of bespoke niche rugged servers, we buy 80 of them. Uh, now we're just buying 80 of thousands that, that are being made for the private sector. So when you combine the heavy investment of private sector uh, uh, money into the rugged edge compute space, uh, and then you add to that the, the reality of what 5G is doing to interconnect uh, items out at the edge, uh, we are seeing it that our prediction, and if you listen to our CEO, Antonio Neri, our prediction is going to be significantly more compute capability at the edge than there ever will ever was in a data center. And so that's the shift. But the private sector shift there first is making it so the federal government is able to adopt this at a fraction of the cost of, of what we were doing in the tactical space in the DoD or think about uh, forestry land management or, or FEMA, all those agencies that have to push compute uh, into an environment that is not a data center, they're all getting a chance to leverage the investment from the private sector, certainly. And then with these new modern architectures, what role does something like zero trust play as you know people are no longer on premise uh, in, in a scenario like that? Yeah, so so zero trust, that's a great buzzword. We've, uh, you know, we, there are a lot of buzzwords in the industry now and zero trust is one of them. And, and what I will tell you is as much, as much as I just said, cloud isn't a destination, it's a style of computing. What I like to describe zero trust as is it's an attitude, right? When you talk about creating your network uh, and it's exactly what it says, zero trust. You don't trust anything on your network. You don't trust the people. You don't trust the, the non-person entities. You don't trust the machines. Everything has to be validated and vetted. And, and while it's become this new buzzword, it's really not that new a concept. You've heard it somewhat in the past as defense in depth where you have layers of, of protection. You know, if you adopt a zero trust mindset in your architecture, you're still gonna do two-factor authentication at login. You're still gonna have certificates validating your, your machines. It's just, it's a, it's a more holistic approach to the idea that you don't trust anything on your network where previously we, we had a hardened shell and the stuff inside your firewalls was good to go. We don't, that zero trust kind of throws that out the window and says, hey, no, 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 nothing on the network is trusted inside or outside your firewall. And it's causing a fair amount more work in the authentication space and the recognition of what's what's normal. So there's a lot of development in, in the AI space on doing trend analysis and identifying the actors on your network based upon uh, activity. Uh, and, and so that's come a long way. So the federal government is embracing it, but I will tell you the federal government was a leader in the space of cybersecurity, mandating the, the PIV cards uh, for hard token identity and things like that. So this isn't a stretch for the federal government. It's just, it's a, it's a good bit of an investment when you start adding that application software layer that's doing that entity resolution for you. So as we close, Bill, uh, we talked about a couple different emerging technologies already today, but I'd like to revisit, you know, the concept of emerging technologies and which ones you think will have the biggest impact on the government of tomorrow. Yeah, you know, I'll throw a softball back at you and say artificial intelligence. That's kind of cheap for me to say that, you know, what I think is going to drive industry 4.0. OK, that's that's a term now, right? Industry 4.0 is saying that we are our stuff, our interconnected things are becoming intelligent uh, and they're able to do some things autonomously. So I'll wrap up the idea that the, 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 the future is going to be driven by our developments in the space of autonomy inside industry 4.0, smart infrastructure, smart stuff that can take advantage of that infrastructure, things that relieve the human being of doing somewhat menial tasks, but because they're automated, they're done you know, much more um, uh, successfully or much more reliably because we're moving human error from there. So I think industry 4.0 dash uh, autonomy is going to be the big driver because that's gonna drive computing at the edge. It's gonna drive artificial intelligence and all those things. But autonomy is really where we see a lot of the investment going moving forward. And the federal government will absolutely benefit from that. That's great. Bill, thank you so much for your time today. Appreciate it's been a pleasure chatting with you. This has been great. Thanks a lot.